it's one of those matches where you will expect both team to lose chips and <laughs> super sport. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously in football, teams to lose. Ex- ex- exactly. It's one of those teams where you say like, unf- unfortunately in football it's gonna be, it can't be even a draw. I mean, that's how bad the, t- the teams are. No, no. <laughs> it's podcast Friday. I've got uh, my guys in the studio though, keeping me company at least. Let's start all the way uh, at Dubai. And a pro Pilani, pro. Been a while. You good? Good evening, good Andy Lesh. Good evening to the Jensen Studio, and good evening to all the listeners of this number one sports show in South Africa. Really appreciate you being here, man. It's great to hear from you. I'm a Zulu at the moment, uh, sitting in, in in what is it, 13th position. You guys working hard. You guys are looking to at least. Uh, can you still make top eight even? Hey, good Andy Le Goubi, man. Hey. <laughs> uh, we, we we are working hard. Yeah, we are fighting, and uh, we still have an opportunity to finish in a better position. And uh, it's so unfortunate that when we started the season, we were aiming for a top four position, and we find ourselves in the bottom four position. But uh, there's still an opportunity for us to climb the ladder. I think the next three games um, will be will be important for us, uh, starting with Chippa United tomorrow. And I'm sure. Uh, the boys would work very hard to win and we'll win the derby again on Tuesday and then on the 12th uh, we'll just um, put a nail on the coffin and then make sure that we send our place in the top eight. <laughs> yeah, nice one, Propilane. Good having you. Yeah, Andy, it's good to be here. I mean, it's been a hectic week for other teams but the the one, the, the topic that really where I look at Kaiser Chiefs, Dil- Solomon saying mental block, super sport, really struggling. It's one of those teams I thought is going to be in the top three in the beginning of the season. It just shows. super sport. Yeah, definitely. After last season where Kevin Hunt just took over. Oh, don't jump the gun. We're mm. getting there. That's yeah. Nadim. That's Nadim. I thought you want to say something to your old party pro here. He says top eight. It's no, no, no. Mo- I-, I fear for him because he's facing Mokan Mamila. I know Chippa United, what they will do to Amazulo. They, they, are, they are that good, Chippa United. To a point where Pirates are not even guaranteed a final spot of the... Netbank Cup. Wow, Mark Haskins is also with us. Mark, always good to have you. Former Chama Cosmos, Morocco Solos, and of course, a Bitwitz Vitz player. But nowadays, he's a talent manager, talent scout, and all things to do with taking care of soccer players from an early age and seeing them through to the senior level and taking care of them even when they're there. Welcome, okay? Great to be here once again. Good evening to the listeners. Uh, and yeah, looking forward to a great show once again. We know there's always, always drama when it comes to South African football. Well, let's perhaps uh, start outside of South Africa because if there's drama at the moment, it's in the Premier League and it's in and around mm. the, the, the three big teams, right? Mm. Um, Arsenal, Liverpool, Man City. Man City last night, mm. after they scored their first one, I said, I game over. All those Arsenal fans <laughs> that were watching here yeah, hoping <laughs> that something could happen, forget about it. They went yeah. on to score four yeah. and they won and wrapped up that match. Liverpool, though, slightly perhaps dropping out. I even said... In that match against Everton, I think that was them bowing out of uh, challenging. But let's hear now from Wayne Rooney because he thinks he might perhaps have uh, a good reason why it is that Liverpool have um, dropped out in the way that they have. From that point of view, do you not question the timing of it getting released that Klopp's leaving the club? Because I think over the last few weeks or a couple of months, I think everyone's saying, oh, it's a fairy tale ending and all stuff like that. But the minute it goes wrong, I think you have to look at that timing of it because... Do so you think that's got something to do with Nunes' finishing? No, but I think with, with, with Nunes, maybe with Salah, with Van Dijk as well, these players now are looking... Klopp's so popular, even as an Everton fan, I, I really like Jurgen Klopp, but with him leaving the club, in their heads, they'll be thinking, what is my future old? Um, am I still going to be a Liverpool player? Do I want to be a Liverpool player? I think that something which yeah listen there might be something in that there might be something in that well is there something in that mark um wayne rooney there um says hey listen when he decided that he's why the announcement was made when it was made because when you take a look at the fact that now the time is drawing closer and closer and you're seeing your hero some of those players got there and Klopp is the only coach I've ever known. Mm. Some of those young players, he's like a father to them. Mm. It's getting closer and closer to that time. You don't want to disappoint him. There's anxiety of he's leaving. What's going to happen when he leaves? Is there a point to that? I can understand why he says that, but I don't necessarily agree. Um, I believe that this Liverpool team, in my mind, is still overachieved. Uh, I believe that Jurgen Klopp, uh, I mean, the, the, the job that he's done at Liverpool, nobody should ever like even second guess and look at and say um, you know if maybe whatever the case may be the reality is Liverpool squad as it is this is true to form every time they've won the league they won the Champions League I believe that it was him because of Klopp's brilliance 
not because Liverpool had the squad in depth to do that. Because wow. every time Liverpool falls short, you'll see a Van Dijk gets injured. Calamitous season. Mo Salah gets injured for a long time. When their key players get injured, it's because they don't have the squad depth that the likes of Man City has. So I still believe that Jurgen Klopp has even overachieved with the squad that he has. And so I'm a massive fan of Klopp, I must say that. So maybe it's a bit of bias on my side. But if you look at the squad that yeah, he has... It is, yeah. If you look at the squad that he has... Yeah. Uh, think about it, Nadim. No, look, it is at, look, at, right. look at who they're bringing off the bench. Mm. Who, who does he have Like if he's... Uh, starting eleven is not there. The reality is, no, I they think do have a lot of players. They've got quality. Actually, are wrong because if you look at Jota, sometimes it doesn't start. Nunes, they've got quality. You're Forward, calling starters They've got now. the best attackers. No, they've got the best attackers. But in England. those are starters. No, no, no. You're calling no, them. I'm no, saying Jota's not even. Jota's not even a starter. There's Nunes. There's if Salah. If Jota is fit, who, who plays ahead of him? There's, there's, there's the Scarpo. I mean, they, I mean, was the star of the World Cup. They've signed so many quality players on the club. The fact is, the club left. Borussia Dortmund after winning two leagues successive thereafter he failed to improve the team he won the Champions League with Liverpool he won the league for the first time after 30 years now he struggled he lost to Madrid in the final of the Champions League after losing to Madrid he even failed to make the top four last season you remember that that's the the players that came off the bench you got uh, Elliot that came on you got Endo that came on you got Kwanza that came on you got Simikas that came on and Gomes what Those that are the five you? players that came off the bench in the last game against Everton. Yeah, but who, they are, they are okay, never, you said there's is that a good bench? There? Is that, is that quality? quality? If is you that... compare that to what Man City has, what they're bringing off the bench. I am saying Liverpool, they've got the best attackers in Europe. If you've got Salah, who's regarded wow. as one of the best players, who's almost on par with Halat. If you've got it, Gagpo was signed as a high-profile player. You've got Nunes, who was signed from the champ. You've got uh, Diaz. I mean, come on, guys. Europe. Those That's are the players. Stretch, yeah? No, no <laughs> they, they do. Look at Madrid. If you look at the attackers of Madrid and Liverpool, Liverpool have got same, way, same way, way, group. way you, better, way you, better you, attackers. Do you agree with Mark that they've got nothing on the bench? Because I've told you who comes off the bench. Do you agree that they don't have much in terms of squad? Uh, immediately I see Diaco Jota who's quality I know that's one player no, I just read you five not players not a bench player Jota struggled with injury and when, every, he's, fit, every, when he's fit every team when he's fit every team he's struggled. a starting player every team struggled with injury Haaland didn't play on but also my question looking at the five players that came off the bench against Everton mm-hmm. and looking at the bench in the last four or five games including yeah. Jota that's one player mm. do they have a good squad no, to they win do. the league Liverpool do have a good squad to win All the right. league they do All have right. the squad let's go to Durban now Pro I, I agree with you, Mark. Liverpool does not have depth in quality. Uh, I, I don't think Uti, I think Uklop uh, had a first 11 and he had mm-hmm. only three subs that are quality and the rest of the players mm-hmm. are, are not good enough for a club like Liverpool. I know Uti, there's an old man from Ed Edison. He mm-hmm. loves Liverpool so much and he's going to insult me for this. Mm-hmm. In Liverpool, they are going to finish even below the Arsenal. What do you mean even? Because they're already below Arsenal and of course, last season they expected they finish below Arsenal. It's going to happen already. They are already behind us. Yeah, they will finish below Arsenal because Man City will finish fourth, uh, Arsenal will be second and Liverpool will be third. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, uh, it's 21 up to the hour six. Uh, that was that. Uh, it, it went from what it was to what it ended <laughs> up being. But that's the beauty of the show, isn't it? Uh, yeah, but I want to say, I mean, as, no, let's, let's, let's move on from that. You can make up your own mind as to what you think on that there. Uh, let's come locally now. But before we get to the DSTV Premiership and the big games of this weekend, including some games this evening, of course, yeah. let's start perhaps in the uh, second tier of South African okay. football, the Mutsipa Foundation Championship. We spoke to Opani Munyai on the title race. If I were to put my head on a block, I think JBR and uh, uh, obviously Amatax uh, for me will be in the top three. And uh, also McGeevy is the number one. Uh, Pro, have you been following what's happening in uh, the league just under? Disappointed with how he hope his college uh, performed in these last few games, uh, but Andy there. Um, they are a quality side. I really expected a lot from them. I really expected them to, to, to mm. finish strongly. And they lost 3 nil against uh, Black Leopards today. And uh, I think they're falling off the race. It's definitely going down to Amatax, JTR, and Kasek. I think Amatax, Nemakese, uh, Makese will definitely qualify automatic promotion. I think Amatax will finish second. And the JTR and Kasek, they will fight for that third spot. And uh, for me, to be honest with you, I saw Kasek last season in my playoff, and I was not uh, quite impressed with uh, mm. their overall performance. 
uh, even though they gave uh, they gave ECS Galaxy badly Mojela, but I do feel that each ATR they deserve an opportunity to go to the playoffs and test themselves. I think uh, they must be done well over the past season to finish uh, in respectable positions, and he deserves to go and test themselves, uh, test himself in the in the in the playoffs, the relegation promotion playoffs. So I'll give each ATR um, uh, number three. Oh, look at that. Uh, I mean, it must be said that Mojela has been quite a find. Um, they're enjoying his services there. He's been mm. such a good player this season. Mark? Yeah, I, I think it's very interesting when you look at Magezi and where they were last season. I mean, they finished 12th on 37 points. Um, and, you know, they had to battle to stay alive, obviously, in the league. Mm. And uh, it, it speaks to the quality appointment of a coach. Um, you know, Clinton Larson coming in made a massive, massive difference. He's experienced, uh, you know, at the top flight, he's experienced in the league, um, just knowing how to, uh, you know, get players together that aren't necessarily superstars, but use them and, you know, bring them together as a unit. Um, and so certainly five points clear with five games to go. It's hard to see that, you know, they'll, they'll mess it up now. Um, I think now it's a battle for second place. And if you look at second place, uh, or second and third place to go into the mm. playoff, I think there's roughly like eight teams <laughs> um, still vying for that. that are still alive in mm. that regard because you mm. could go all the way down to, to Hungry Lions, who's on 35 points, mm. and they're in ninth position. Mm. Um, they very much still, I mean, they're only three points a- away from a playoff spot. Yeah. And so uh, a lot's still going to happen in that league. It's going to be interesting. Magezi, uh, I think they, do they, they come up against Kazarik this weekend, I think it is. So that one is going to be a crunch, crunch encounter. Before we go to Nadim, the other conversation we'll be having today, the big one. Last week, we started with uh, uh, Player of the Year in the PSL. Who do we think it is? And I think overwhelmingly, we decided, um, because he was the most uh, mm. featured on everybody's list, that Ronald Williams is going to stand a strong chance um, of winning it. Today, we're going to be speaking about best young player this season. Mm. Is Mufuking going to get a nod from Pro Pilani, Mark, or Nadim? That's still coming up. But NFT. NFT is very tough, Andy. If you look at how it started, I personally believed. How, if you look how uh, Marumo Galans finished the, the, the league last season, you look at how they were performing in the CAF Confederations Cup, I thought they would just automatic qualification. Now they are fighting relegation of the NFT. Sinkim Nisi promised them that he's going to meet them in the change rooms. The NFT team, they must be scared of him. His team is going to be promoted. I mean, they are far from promotion. My case, they've done well. Uh, this league is so unpredictable. I remember you speaking to the uh, Lesel. He was quite optimistic that he might be promoted. Of course, now he's not going to be promoted. It's one of those leagues where you feel like Amatax and my case have really done well. They are in a position where it's almost in their hands. Either via automatic qualifications, especially for Makesi, I'm attacks via playoffs. I think they are strong enough. After being tested against Sundowns, it's one of those teams that you think is good. those two teams are going to be in the NFT, PSL next season. Tags go away this this weekend. If they don't beat Fender um, away from home, then they can kiss top. The, obviously, winning the league goodbye, then they'll have to rely on the playoff. Yeah. But but Dan is still alive in the playoff. He's no, still no, got no, a chance of making. Remember, playoff. Dan Dance was given Dan still has one a chance instruction to make the playoff. Yeah, I was given one instruction. You have to win. No, pl- you have playoffs. to get us promoted. No, he's not going to be promoted. As I said when he was hired, that he's not going to be promoted. I mean, he doesn't have a chance. I don't even know why you're saying that. Because if you look... He can't t- get to playoffs. He, he, even if he can, he's not going to be promoted. Because if you look at how Amatax played against Sundowns, how they beat Swallows, how Swallows are doing well in the league. I mean, we thought Sa- Sa- Swallows, after releasing so many players, they were struggling, but they're showing so much improvement. Amatax, they look solid. Even in my case, that's why I'm saying, even if they can by chance, by miracle, make the playoffs, they're also going to struggle there. So, so you're saying if tax go to playoffs, they automatically, they're up already? I've already said I'm a tax and I'm a case. So in the PSL All right. Okay. Yeah. All right, there's a big game today. Mamdouri Sundown, second on Esperance, but there's also two games um, out in the Premier League. That's like Cape Town Spurs that play Richards Bay, TS Galaxy take on Morocco Swallows in the division that we speak of now, which is the first division of South African football, the mm. Mutsepe Foundation Championship. It's Black Leopards that take on Orbit College and Pretoria Achilles play Uppington City. More games in the Champions League include Al Ahli and TP Mazembe. Both games in the Champions League are deciders as to who will play in the final. Remember, we haven't had it in, since I think it's 20, 2009. Well, we have not had an Egyptian, uh, a Northern African team in the final. It could happen today, but highly unlikely, especially in the TP Mazembe Alakli game. They go away to Alakli. One wonders what's going to happen there. So let's go straight into it, gentlemen. Champions League football. Sundowns are at home 
against Esperance. They come into this game a goal down pro. Difficult one for, for, for Sundowns for Andilo. Last time they overturned the semi-final first place defeat was against Zeko in 2016, and they went on to win it. And uh, they have not scored in the last three Cape Chapters League matches. And uh, I think um, in the F- AFL they showed the great nerves of steel. Uh, this time around, I think the hero for Mamelo to Sundowns will definitely be fans uh, on the stands. They're going to tear the team up, and they're going to help the team to, to overcome this one year deficit. And I see Sundowns winning 3-1, and it's going to be Three to an aggregate and they'll progress to the final. Hmm, but, a... but you just said they've not scored in the last three matches. Now they'll score three goals today. Yeah, game. yeah, they, they, they've saved their goals for tonight. And uh, I, I, oh, need to okay, no. I need to be patriotic. I need to be patriotic this time around and say Sundowns will progress to the next round. Are you being patriotic or do you truly believe that? I truly believe that they put Andy, and there's, a, there's an element of patriotism as well. And I feel with Tiko <laughs> Trulani and his team, they have done fairly well, and they deserve this opportunity to to qualify for the Club World Cup as well uh, by virtue of winning the Cape Champions League or even progressing to the final. Mark, yeah, it's going to be a tough one. Um, it's really tough. And again, you know, I ask myself the same question: Am I thinking as a patriot, or am I thinking, you know, with my head? Mm. and not my heart uh, it's difficult uh, to separate uh, you know what they've they've not been able to do over the last three games and that they haven't scored and against an Esperance team that's gonna obviously you know they're well versed with this competition they're very experienced they know uh, what it takes to get to that final um, but I do believe uh, like pro something in me just says no that uh, they will get over the line uh, you know they've had to dig deep and I think they experience it in the AFL is what's going to be the difference. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, the amount of football they've played, uh, you know... This is you after having watched the first, uh, the, the two games, home and away, uh, in Tanzania and here against Yanga. This is all, like, you looking at that team, how they've been performing, how they've struggled against that low block. You're looking at all of that and you think... I look even at their league form. Yeah. Sundowns have not been entirely convincing even in the league, but they found a way. They always, they've just managed, that sundowns of late, they've managed to find a way to get across the line, no matter what it takes. And we agree and on how structured and disciplined that Esperance team is. No, of course, and that's why I'm saying it's going to be a tall order, but that's literally epitomized who sundowns is now. Mm. Um, with their backs against the wall, they, they find, find a way. way to get across the line. And I think that ultimately will be the difference today. It's going to be very difficult. They did it against um, Younger. They did it against Riches Bay. They did it now um, against the Sukukuna. That wasn't an easy team to beat, but they were they able to They did it against it. Tux. They did it they, against you Tux know, as well. Whatever it takes, if it's going to be penalties, whatever it takes, they make sure that you know they, they put everything they on grind. the line. And that's that's what's epitomized them of late. Nadim doesn't look like he agrees. Nadim? Yeah, but I understand why Mark and Pro are saying the, what they're saying because they they are very clear that they're being patriotic. The results are not supporting their statement simply because they played an NFD team, a full-strength Sundowns that couldn't beat Amatags. A full-strength Mamelodi Sundowns couldn't even score a single goal against Yanga. I mean, the, Yanga is the one actually that scored what looked like a goal. Of course, it was disallowed. Then they went away, where Sundowns are usually strong away. They couldn't even score a single goal. Now they are playing at home where they are, if they've not scored again in the Champions League in the last match against... So it's very difficult to see the three goals Pelan is talking about because the last time Sundowns played in this kind of match, last time, last season, they drew 2-2 two two with a white hat. That's how they were eliminated. The fear here is that Sundowns can draw this match and score. If there's one score, then Sundowns are eliminated. They need to win something that they've not been doing in the past few matches, in the last three matches of the Cup Champions League. They've not won a single match. So uh, it's, you just hope Roland reaches the final and Sundowns win a second star. That's what we were hoping for, but it's going to be difficult if it does happen. I mean, I've seen some videos. I've just retweeted it now from Usna Temba Makono um, of uh, the ES Tunis invading Loftus Festival Stadium. They're doing it with that smoke of theirs. they big mm. flags. They've really <laughs> come out in support of their team. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but take a look at that. It's just incredible what they, they're doing because, you know, they atmosphere people. And so yeah, like, like another thing, Andy, that shocks me about Sundowns. Sundowns usually the time where they were doing well in the Champions League, if you remember very well, they were playing their games during the day when it's hot. I honestly think this thing of playing this kind of games at night it benefits the North African teams. I don't know why they moved away from that because you knew that they will trash Ali Ali. I mean, the last time they beat Ali Ali, I think five two, uh, Ali and they scored the praise. 
it was played during the day where it was hot, where the weather didn't suit them. But now they're taking this match at night where it suits those Arabic people. I honestly feel that Sundowns are not are, are taking away the advantage from. <laughs> It's 18.33. We're going to be taking your calls, of course, and your thoughts on 086-000-2160 or WhatsApp on 060-552-7303. Last one, uh, as far as the topics are concerned anyway, before we get into the best young player. Kaiser Chiefs, struggling Kaiser Chiefs, taking on Super Sports United this weekend. It's uh, a game that on any other season, any other year, you know, would be a top-of-the-league clash, would be a game that everybody's looking out for um, it plays tomorrow at half past five, that game there. When you take a look at what it looks like in the league at the moment, you've got Kaza Chiefs sitting in 10th position with 30 points after 24 games. Super Sports United in 5th position with 35. So there's a 5-point difference between the two with a mm. goal difference of 0 both ways, meaning Super Sports United have scored 29 and conceded 29. Kaza Chiefs have scored 19 and conceded 19, Nadim. Yeah, that's how bad both teams are. I honestly, I'm just, I'm beginning to believe that Gavin Hunt has forgotten how to coach. Because if you look at this guy, I've followed his career from when he was coaching in Cape Town, went to coach Black Leopards, Swallows, then Super Sport United, Vets. He was always that good. I mean, the, the last time Black Leopards were, were a solid top eight team was when Gavin Hunt was coaching Black Leopards. Then he took over Swallows. They almost won the league. They became number two to Super Sport United. He went to Super Sport. He won the league three times in a row. He went to Vets. He won the league. He went to Kaiser Chiefs. I mean, people don't even know that maybe Kaiser I'm talking about. They, they were saying that guy, that was not Gavin Hunt. That was Hunt Gavin. That team was so bad at Kaiser Chiefs. Then went to Chipa United. Morgan Mamila is actually doing better than what Gavin was doing. Now with Super Sport United, who are running out of it, he, he took Tsukamanji from Pirates, where we thought Tsukamanji was going to score goals from. Now this team is struggling. We can't say they are doing that bad because they don't have quality players. This squad uh, was number three last season. But now this season it just became so bad. With Chiefs, the less set up by them, the better. Because they are just like so bad. Super Bowl have conceded a goal in every one of their last 25 matches. And they've got a Bafana Bafana goalkeeper there. They've got two defenders. Bafana, I mean, one is the former Bafana Bafana captain, and the other one, we're told, is the next Lucas Hatebe. Why are they conceding so much if they've got that qual- that kind of quality? Because it's coming from Super Sport United. It's not coming from us. That Econ will be better than Lucas Hatebe and Mark Fish. But why are you conceding so much if you've got a Bafana Bafana goalkeeper that will know that is, is, is that good? A- exactly. You just. It's one of those matches where you will expect both team to lose Chiefs and <laughs> Super Sport. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously in football, both team to lose. Ex- ex- exactly. It's one of those teams where you say like, unfortunately in football it's gonna be, it can't be even a draw. I mean, that's how bad the, t- the teams are. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Two losers on the day. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> no, the funny thing is when I look at this, I, I'm very surprised by it. Like, and if you look at the the, the respective records, mm. um. Super Sports, I would expect possibly to rather have Chiefs' record and Chiefs to have Super Sports' record. Um, Chiefs have one of the best defensive records in the league and Super Sport have one of the worst defensive records in yeah. the league. Mm. Um, it's on the part of Super Sport, it's only Cape Town Spurs, Richards Bay, uh, I think it's Royal AM and Golden Arrows are the only teams that have a worse goal de- um uh, well, defensive record than Super Sport United, and for me, that's extremely uncharacteristic of mm. any Gavin Hunt team. Mm. Gavin Hunt prides himself on shoring things up defensively. Mm. It's almost like he's one of those coaches who believes you you build your defense first and you move forward from there. Mm. You don't concede goals, you can't lose matches. You know those kind of principles is kind of like what has echoed through Gavin Hunt's coaching career, um, and so it's very surprising to see this kind of record. And then on the part of Kaiser Chiefs. Mm. Uh, 19 goals scored. Um, that's one of the, you know, it's not a great attacking record, but mm-hmm. they have a great defensive record. And then you ask yourself, okay, so if they're good defensively, clearly, you know, going forward, there's there's a bit of an issue. And the funny thing is, it's not like you look at Kaiser Chiefs and say mm-hmm. they're missing 100 opportunities every match or, you know, it's like guilt-edged opportunities mm-hmm. that they're missing. Just going forward uh, in attack, they are nowhere near the enterprising mm. Kaiser Chiefs that you expect. Because we know that's a team you expect to play great football, uh, dominate teams in terms of possession. They're not doing that. So both teams, very, very uncharacteristic uh, by nature, by what we've come to know and love from those respective teams. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really topsy-turvy season. It's been one of those. Mm. Pro? Uh, 
Hey, it's a tough one, but Andy, uh, both teams, I think Sport Sport has not won a, a match in 2024, if I'm not mistaken, and the uh, HFs have only won one, and uh, these are the two teams that have uh, shown faith in recent matches to, to, to young stars, and they've given a lot of young stars. We saw Ufundo Villagas getting an opportunity again against Richard Bay, and how he... He tried to influence the game coming from the bench. We saw Abum um, Pidu Shabanala trying to have an influence. He supports sport on the other hand. They've got to email O'Connor at the back. They've got to shut the campbell. I think um, it's going to be an interesting match uh, that is going to end in a draw with gold. Because uh, mm-hmm. I, I don't know if uh, if, if you support sport wins, uh, who's going to steal the match for them. I know which is a fixture that they enjoy the most. Um, they, I think they've beaten the Chiefs and uh, I think this is a chance for them to also uh, regain their confidence that we know is super spot off. And uh, this one around, this time around, I think a draw will be a fair result. I think you're right. Uh, 2023 was the last time they won a match in the, uh, in, in the league. Uh, the two, what, was it two or three one against the London Pirates? Yeah, um, Super Sport United. Yeah, yeah that's, mm. that's the last match they mm. won uh, last year already. And Kaiser Chiefs have won only one game in the last 10. So now it's end of April. One win, such a big team, guys. Maybe we should stop saying Kaiser Chiefs is a big team because the way they play, they don't play like a big team. The results are not identifying a big team. Let's just say it used to be a big team, but now they are not behaving like a big team. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, best young player in the DSCV Premiership over the last season. Does Mufuken get a nod in? What about out at Stellenbosch? Some great youngsters there have been doing some magic too. Who? Would you give your nod to? We're shifting the focus now to speak about the best young player. But before that, let's touch on statistics on everything that we've spoken about. And to do so, we need to go to the man who still blew on what was the blue app, now X Twitter, that is Opta Jabu, unofficial Twitter page for South African and African soccer stats. Enlightening South Africans, you can DM them for all queries that you want to use there. Uh, they've got just over 20,000 followers. Surely, surely by the end of this year, guys, 50. I urge you, if you don't follow Opta Jabu yet, it's my goal with them. Let's push that page to 50,000 followers. It's Opta Jabu, O-P-T-A Jabu. It's the best stats page on X. Trust me on that one. Representing the guys, of course, is Linda Lamoyo out in Cape Town. Linda. Andy, good evening. Uh, good evening to you and your listeners as well. A realistic goal, yeah? 50 by the end of the year. 50 by the end of the year. That is the goal, Andy. We're All right. in Cape Town today. We're actually in Flexto. Hey, you're not too far from us. Not too far. Here for a sister's wedding. Well, let's get into the DSTV Premiership first. The game that we've picked on that we want to see is Chiefs versus Supersport. What can you tell us about this match? Yes, Andy, I've been listening all along on the show. People have been discussing the bad records that Chiefs and Supersport have so far this year. Supersport still winless in 2024. That's eight games. It's the longest they've ever gone without a win from the start of the year. Hmm. And it's a record they share only with Cape Town City. Those are the two teams who haven't won a single game in 2024 so far. They beat Chiefs, though, this season. They did. They did beat Chiefs this season. So that's the bright side. They can actually get a league double over Chiefs for the first time in 12 years if they win this coming weekend. Last doing so in 2012, also under the same coach, Gavin Hunt. Wow, interesting one. That Now, let's shift focus to the CAF Champions League. You've got Sundowns versus Esperance. Yes, big game tonight, Andy Le Sundowns hosting Esperance. We know they lost the first leg in Tunisia, and it's the 12th time that they've lost the first leg of a CAF knockout tie. And so the question automatically is, what happens in those situations? Mm. They've progressed in six of the 12, so they're in a 50-50 situation at the moment. So every time they've lost the first tie, they've progressed six times in the last 12 and lost six times. So it's 50-50 at the moment. It's 50-50 at the moment, yeah. But what about, how do, how do teams from Tunisia travel in South Africa? So they're actually quite distant when they come to South Africa, teams from Tunisia. Esperance leads those teams when it comes to wins on South African soil. That's two wins. They won against Super Sport in 2004, and they also beat Sundowns in 2017. So it's a pretty decent record for the Tunisian team when they come to our show. Opta, I don't want you to hang up because I want to ask the guys first before I go to you and your stats. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, Pro Pilani out in Durban. Pro, your top three best young players this season. 
Uh, but Andy, the number one on my list is uh, Sandra Campbell of Sports Pop United. Mm. His first season is 18 years old. I think he has played 16 matches and scored two goals. Uh, playing in front of a player like Upaser, I think Upaser has helped him a lot to enjoy his game. Uh, number two on my list would be Renebo Hile Mofukeng of Orlando Pirates, 19 years old, 20 matches, two goals. I think playing in front of a player like Dion also has also helped him to enjoy his game and he's very influential in Paris attack. Very, very effective in the final stage. I think um, uh, he might be a star for the future for South Africa. And the third one for me is uh, Ime Okon, the defender for Super Sports United. The only Achilles heel for him is that he's playing for a team that uh, that is that has considered 29 goals, if I'm not mistaken. But and, you put uh, him there. Oh, uh, that's his top three. <laughs> <laughs> that's his top three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I put him on my list purely because uh, I think Tyson Satwayo has helped him a lot and he has benched Ukigen Allen, he has benched Jose and Jacolo in so the you, team. So and, you're uh, choosing a me, defender of a team that is one of the most conceding? P- yes, because, because uh, I'm choosing an individual in a team in a team uh, performance for Andili. I think Ime Ukon is, is, is a quality, quality, quality young man. And uh, uh, he reminds me of uh, Ole Tumakanya, or the one who was the selling for a quality young boy. I think South Africa will benefit a lot from him. Uh, if, 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 we, if we get him for Bafana Bafana in the future, I think he's one of the of our brightest uh, prospects that we have. Yeah, that's right. my top three for Andy. I hear you. Mark, what was your top three? It's very interesting. I'm going to say this. For, uh, uh, in the DDC last season, three players were nominated player of the season. Mm-hmm. It's uh, Kaka Sifumba at Cape Town uh, City, Shandri Campbell and Rile Mofokeng. Uh, uh, Kaka won it. But if you look at the other two, they really come and set the league alight. The crazy thing about the Young Player of the Season award, though, it's an under-23 award. Yeah. And if you look at, uh, I, I think those two, I agree with those two, um, Rile and Shandre, they've done exceptionally well given their ages. One born 2004, one born 2005. But Oswin Apollos qualifies as well. Mm, he uh, does. Jaden Adams qualifies as well. And I think those two for their respective teams have been very good. Oswin Apollos even getting a nod into the AFCON squad. Jaden Adams, the same thing, getting a nod into the AFCON squad. So um, the fact that they still qualify means that they definitely should be among the front runners. And if you look at it, Oswin Apollos, in, in terms of under-23 players, has played more minutes uh, than you know a lot of the league. He's played uh, almost uh, 2,000 minutes. And so definitely, I think he's, he's one of the front four, runners. So who's your three? Um, Oswin, Jaden, and Rile. Wow, okay. Nadim? Yeah, mine, I also agree with Jaden Adams. I think it's part of the reason why Stellenbosch won the Culling Black Label Cup and are doing well in the league. If you look at him for Kang, 30 games in all competitions and scored three goals, he, one will say he's responsible that maybe he's no longer a starter, Saleng, the player, player's player of the season last season, and also Kemi Rasmus. I think Mfokeng has really done well. I actually believe that he's one of the strong, strong candidates, and um, he might even win it. And then another one, David Titus is 22 years. He's also been brilliant for mm. Cape Town. I mean, sometimes, yeah, Stellenbosch, you expect a lot from uh, Stellenbosch because of these players have so much improved. Uh, I give credit to Steve Parker, the coach, I mean, to develop the, them. Those yeah, kind of two things. or three players in that squad yeah. that could be a part of this exactly. conversation. Adams, I mean, I think we, when Merit was selected to the Afcon squad, uh, Titus is 23 years. I think he's still part of the age group. So give me your top three again. Mufokeng, Titus, and uh, Jaden Adams. Let me go to Opta. And, and Opta, you've done some homework here, uh, and we've grouped them according to stat. Most chances created by a player under 23? Indeed, Andile, we chose a few metrics here to look at. Most chances created by a player under 23. Number one is 43 for Austin Apollos, and then 31 for Jaden Rhodes as well. Jaden Rhodes didn't come up in this conversation. So most chances created by a player under 23 in the league, 43 Austin Apollos, and 31 by Jaden Rhodes, okay? Most yes. goals scored by a player under 23. Most goals scored by a player under 23, six for Ashley Cupido, and then five for God's Power, Igor Darrow, and once again, Austin Apollos. So once again, Ashley Kibito didn't come up in this conversation, nor did Igor Darrow. Both of them are high scorers uh, under 23. How old is God's Power? He's 22, is he not? Yeah, but okay. He's yeah. under 23, so he still okay, qualifies. Okay, okay. <laughs> Most assists <laughs> by a player under 23. Most assists by a player under 23. That's four for Shandre Campbell, and then three each for Kumani Butaka, Antonio Van Veek, Rilebo Hilebo Fukeng, 
and once again, Oswina Polis. Do you know who shows up on every one of those? Oswana Polis. He's created more chances than any player under mm-hmm. 23. He scored more goals than most players. Five. Only one person, Ashley Kapito, scored more than him. And he shows up again in the most assists by a player under 23. Opta, we appreciate you. Thank you very much. Cheers, Andile. Opta's out of here. We keep propylining, of course, uh, Nadim and Mark. I wonder if that changes your mind, guys. Uh, I said mm. Oswin Apollos, and so definitely one of my front runners. Uh, he shows up statistically. He's been the best. No, he does. And if you look how Bolo, Bolo Kwan have improved, he's one of the best players. I mean, he even went to the Afghan squad. Pro? I can't argue. I can't argue with uh, uh, Oswin uh, Apollos' name. I think uh, he, he's going to be a brightest uh, star in the country, and uh, I like him a lot. Andile, good evening, my brother, and all Metro FM listeners around the globe. Today, I only want to wish Mamiri Sundowns good luck. I hope they win, qualify for the Club World Cup, and go to the final of the Cap Champions League. Because in the final, anything can happen. They can even beat uh, their rivals 5-0, like they did to al Hali some time ago. It's Moses Mukwena, Hamukokwaila. Thank you. Um, and this bulls elema and in bulls and onkin abasalu jibako. Um, and in tangela abasalu jibako, one salu jilapa. In doni o opera is no bono no victor shungwana. Be picky sana, gom tetoga fifa. Mm. Gom tetoga fifa about fun against elefana iba. O victor shungwana oti la offside la coolie swallows. The fan by a cool o two o two ulandu eight noble. He coolie and always be in ma a. In Gabba Glissin, in Gabba Sangana, you ref of the season, Glissin, Glendale, or Ref, Besson Sangayo. Dango. It's a good question, that second one, you know, but uh, yes, there will still be an award for referee of the season, even in a controversial season such mm. as this one. And yes, it doesn't happen once. I think it's highlighted because this was such a big one, mm. you know, but it happens a lot that I see after we've done our show, um, I see oh. later on that yeah. Ace Noble didn't agree with what we've said. Uh, I stick with my guy. Mm. You know, Victor's my guy, and I stick with my guy. So I guess it's the same as uh, as, as anything else in football, but the law mm. should be the law, and we shouldn't be seeing it two different ways, though. But it this, is This was is. my initial problem with VAR. Why I said it doesn't matter. Let's just let the guy make mistakes on the field instead of someone with cameras and replays making the same mistakes. And that's why I've never been for VAR. 86 taking your calls. Exchange one by the one by the I met Eastern Cape in Wusu. I just received my transfer from Kiza Chief last week. Now I'm going to my Melody Sundown. I'm no sky is the limit right now. That's fair. We are winning <laughs> two one today. <laughs> We're going to no, a you can't swap Wish. teams. Why not? No, you, you, no, the actually, team you can. are born but with. No, no, no. You, you go with. Look at Pilani. No, he used no. to support Sundowns. Now it's supporting Amazon. <laughs> you can. Wait, but did you hear what he said the scoreline is going to be? What did he say? He said his team is winning 2-1. Two, two, one. And 2-1 two, is out. It's Chaili. Yeah. yeah. Andre, you missed the sarcasm. The sarcasm, my man. You can't, you can't say Sundowns is winning 2-1. No, I yeah, hear yeah, what you're saying. So he's wishing them. He's actually not wishing them well. I see. <laughs> Maybe it's the same scenario of Victor. But one guys, you can't. Eight. You can't. You can't change teams. No, I refuse. No, you can. Why and not? What law is no, this now? No, you yeah. can. The team that you decide on when you are young is a team that you die no, with. No, no, no. no I no, decided no. on Man United when I was in primary school. They're the worst team at the moment out of the no. top teams, but I stay with them. No, I used Sometimes to. I used to support us and I left. <laughs> I left in peace. No, you can, actually. <laughs> but I you're used to, back now. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. I used to be a hardcore Arsenal fan. I used to, like, watch every game. Like, so no, where are you have now? you moved? Have you changed? No, no, you I'm just, just stopped I'm a spectator. No, no exactly. You see, that's that's fine. fine. But yeah, you but can't change teams. No. Can I play the last <laughs> one there? And delay. Let me tell you something. In our NFD, I'm giving it to Magazi. In our PSL, Sundowns. And uh, in English, it is like a movie that we have witnessed before. Manchester City will win this one. It's Moses Mokwena of Hamukwa Gwaila. Thank you. From us, uh, we'll do it again on Monday. Let's uh, reflect back on the weekend and now leave you in the very capable hands of the party starters. Pella, pella. Nanzomi.